1959. A new altitude record is set. 103,389 feet, or 31,513 meters. But the new record raises a new fear. Could a pilot eject from such heights and live? Joe Kittinger is the man to find out. It was a challenge. It was something that we needed to know. It was something that I was trained for. It was something that I, I could contribute for. And so I volunteered. August the 16th, 1960. New Mexico. A helium balloon will carry Joe to the edge of space. When he steps out of his open gondola, he'll be a man alone at almost 32 kilometers up. The stratosphere. Man had never been into space. We'd never had a man outside of a spacecraft. This was the first exposure of a man in a space environment. The stratosphere starts around 10 kilometers above the Earth and extends up another 40 kilometers. It's freezing, as low as minus 60 degrees Celsius. Air pressure is so low, internal organs may expand and blood boils, even at this temperature. The air is so thin you can't breathe. The only way to survive is to wear a pressure suit with an oxygen supply. As Joe rises, his oxygen supply will inflate the suit, creating a pressurized atmosphere around him and allowing his body to function normally. I had little booties on my feet that inflated. I had gloves on my hands that inflated and of course my pressure suit. On the ground before I took off, all this equipment had checked out perfectly. Joe's suit will keep him alive in the stratosphere, but the jump itself presents another critical danger. Now we knew from previous tests that a body free falling from high altitude usually entered into a violent spin. And our task was how to get the man down without spinning. We accomplished this by a small five foot diameter uh, parachute uh, that gave just a very small amount of drag and stability to the body falling from high altitude. His ascent will take an hour and a half. So far, so good. Thirty minutes in, Joe rechecks his suit. And all of a sudden I discovered that my glove in my right hand was not working. Now this created some concern because we had never ever done any test like having an appendage not pressurized. The glove refuses to inflate. His hand is under lower pressure than the rest of his body. As he ascends, blood will pool in his hand and fingers. He'll lose circulation. The pain will be agonizing. And I made the conscious decision to go ahead and make the flight. It was a calculated risk that I took to not tell the ground to go ahead and do it, uh, with, even though I knew that I had a problem with my right hand. A brave call. He can't afford another malfunction. If something goes wrong with the pressure suit, you are dead. It takes another 60 minutes to complete his ascent. His right hand is swollen, aching, and useless. I stood up there and looked out, and I said, Lord, take care of me now. And that was the most fervent prayer he said in my life. And with that, I jumped out. And now I'm facing the earth, and I'm falling. I turned over and saw the balloon firing into space. And then I realized how fast I was going. In the lower atmosphere, air resistance and other factors keep skydivers from falling faster than 217 kilometers an hour. 
Although Joe has the small drogue chute to keep him from spinning, in the thin air of the stratosphere, it won't slow him down. He just gets faster. Almost a third of a kilometer every second. 988 kilometers per hour. After about, uh, about 90,000 feet, I was doing supersonic. Almost the speed of sound. I was extremely happy as I was falling because every second I fell, I was getting back to a friendly earth, to a, to a place that's not hostile. As Joe reaches the edge of the atmosphere, the air gets denser and he starts to slow down. After four minutes and 36 seconds, he's reached almost 15 and a half thousand meters. When the main parachute opened, I said, Lord, thank you for taking care of me in that, that jump. Eight minutes and 53 seconds later, he lands at White Sands in New Mexico. And I just laid there because I was just, I was elated. And uh, they rushed up to me. They were happy to see me alive. I was happy to be alive and well. It was a euphoric situation. His hand is swollen to almost twice its normal size, but he'll recover. Joe proved a man can survive the stratosphere. Pressure suits now used in the space shuttle are based on the one he pioneered. In a single jump, Joe made the highest manned balloon ascent the highest parachute jump, and the longest parachute freefall on record. We didn't set out to set a record, but we set a record now that's, that's for 47 years, so it's not easy to do. But more importantly, we showed that man could go into space. So we had accomplished something that people said you couldn't do. So that made us proud. That made us, we had taken something from fiction and made it a fact. 